In this video, we're going to finish our proof of the Cauchy Schwartz inequality. So, at the end of the last video, we had that this double sum on the left hand side is equal to this mess of terms on the right hand side. But it's only a mess until you notice that the first term and the last term are exactly the same. So, we can rewrite the right hand side as being equal to twice the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared times the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi squared. Then what we do is we notice that for this second term, the first part of the second term is exactly the same as the second part. So we can rewrite this second term as just being minus 2 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times yi. And then what we need to do is we need to square this entire expression. Okay, so why have we done this? Well, if we go back to our original sum which we started with, we notice that if xi and yi represent real numbers, then because I'm squaring this term inside the parenthesis here, each of these individual terms has to be greater than or equal to zero, because when you square a negative number, it becomes positive. So the minimum value that this term inside the parenthesis here can take is zero, which means that the overall sum has a minimum value, which is zero. Hence, we know that this entire sum must be greater than or equal to zero which means that the right-hand side must be greater than or equal to zero. Then what we do is we take this term over to the right-hand side, and then we just get left with, if we cancel the twos, we get the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared times the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi squared must be greater than or equal to the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi times yi and then we need to square this entire right-hand side. So in doing so, we have proved the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality.